Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Mental Mobility Podcast. I'm Pete, and we're here with not a special guest. I always say this is a special guest, not a guest. This is my brother-in-law, so he's more than anything to me, right? So to you, he's very important. So he's a special guest. He's intriguing us. He's a prestige, prestige <laughs> guest. Ooh, I have today. I like that. I yeah, right, prestige. Badges. Yeah. Only from the car. Car dealership told me about prestige. Episode number one zero. No, we're at one ten. We're gonna discuss some stuff today. We're gonna talk. We're gonna catch up. He was on our podcast back in year number one, episode number single digits. So let's get to it. Ed, introduce yourself. Thanks, man. Um, what can I say? My name's Ed. Um, uh, I like to be called Ed. Uh, I am a uh software engineer technical support um maybe becoming security analyst <laughs> sort of working on those skills uh based in new york um former strength coach for about 15 years uh still have a passion for uh strength and conditioning and uh yeah that's me word word did you notice like this is obviously going to be the main question right <clears throat> to kind of catch everyone up with is you went from two different worlds, right? And this is what I definitely right. want to talk about with you. It's like when we first talked, we kind of just talked about the move and and the transitions, the hard times of the transition, how depressing it could be, how hard it could be, how um, unconfident you feel. I don't know the word. I guess uh, what's it? I guess we always have imposter syndrome, but like, I, why am I even here? Why am I even doing this? But he said strength coach for fifteen years, like. That's a long time to be in a field. And then out of nowhere, you switch, mm -hmm. right? Tell us, like, how, what did that feel like to oh, have man. to do that? I mean, well, it was a, for the most part, it was a, it was a learning experience, right? Still, I think back to the, that time. I think back to the the idea that uh, for 15 years, I was very, I was, well, let's say for the, the latter half, I was very comfortable. I knew what I was doing, you know, um, nothing was really challenging. I was a professional, you know, I, I knew how to design programs, how to work with people, how to talk to people, how to sell, um, you know, how to train all different modalities, all different ages, gender, whatever. Right. And for a long time, I, I didn't, I wasn't really being challenged. And I think that's a danger. I look back now could because you're not prepared for something to really challenge you. And so obviously, right um that major thing happens i lose my job um realizing i don't have any other skills and yeah it does take a toll on your sort your self-confidence and, and and your abilities and and you're questioning every choice you've made in the past and not, you're sort of left um you know without a what's the saying without a paddle to row with right right um yeah, it took a lot. It took a, uh, in just until maybe just up until recently, I, I now I'm starting to feel not so much like I know things now in, in this world and world technology, because I'm still, I, I think, an infant, still learning a lot. Right. But what I'm learning now is how hard work can go a long way and how sort of having belief in your abilities and what you can do, because I've done it before. Right. I, I'm nice to that. I kept saying that to myself. You've been here before. There was a time where I didn't know anything about training. There was a time that I was weak. There was a time where um, I wasn't a professional. Uh, but if I do follow this path now in this world, if I do all the right things, uh, do all the studying I need to do, all the practicing, all, uh, put my, putting myself in, in bad positions, trying to create programs, trying to write algorithms, try, um, picking up tickets where I have no idea what's going on and then getting through that, pushing through and going through the hard stuff does help you level up and uh, makes me feel more uh, confident and able to do things that I thought I could not. Um, so th I think those are the biggest takeaways uh, from the, the transition is um, believing yourself. Right. For sure. Right. It, it sounds like, like for some people that might be listening, they think they're obviously stuck in something that yeah. they probably don't want to do anymore, right? And it's, you know, if you put that work into it, you kind of keep your mind right, which is pretty easy to say versus doing, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can achieve it. Like you can definitely, you're, you can do it. And I remember we just we just met, like we were just there in New Jersey in, in May or New York in, in May. And you were like, it's finally starting to click. 
And like, I remember when we were, you were here, like Christmas time, you mm-hmm. you said, I don't think I'm ever going to understand half the <laughs> shit that's going to, like they're talking about. But yeah. when you said that, I was like, oh shit, he's now like trainer ed again. You know what I mean? Like when you were a trainer, you loved it so much. You're so interested in it that you buried yourself in understanding like the intricacies of, of training from every methodology. From You knew a lot. You were very smart. Right. It's because you trained yourself in doing so. It seems like now that flow is kind of finding yourself in your work now. That's right. I mean, I think um, that I think that was probably my <laughs> the the tool in my back pocket. You know, I, I knew sort of what helped me before and I just applied those same things. I just emulated the exact same actions. Um and like I said before, it's just putting myself in a bad spot, doing things that made me really uncomfortable. Um, if I found I didn't understand something, I would sit down and like, okay, I'll figure it out. Um, and that's, I think that's a big part of this world is just solving problems and figuring things out and, and trying to understand how things work. Right. And I think that's the definition of engineering. It's like, yep. how, how do things, things work? Um, I did that with training. How does the body work? How, do, how does right. it move that way? How do you how does a deadlift uh, uh, work? What is the best uh, position to be in? How do the, all the uh, leverages, if you have long femurs and and, uh, and maybe short arms, how does that look for someone who's trying to deadlift that way? Uh, right. you, you, it helps you understand things better. And I've been doing that in this world now, just seeing how all the pieces fit and how um, things get from point A to point B. And it does help me set a foundation for sure. Right. Um, but I'm, I'm, you know, again, like I said, it's in the, for, it's still very early days, right? Right. Um, it's going to require even more effort. Like, and the more that I, I learn, the more complicated things get, yeah. right? And so I think it'll take a few years before I get to a place where I feel like I can learn better, right? I guess yeah. that's another thing, right? You have to learn how to learn. Yeah. Um. And yeah, once I get there, and, and that's that's what I just focus on every day is to, the, that the goal is to learn as much as I can, uh, get a get a strong understanding of, of systems, and and then find my own sort of unique way of doing things, which I sort of do now a little bit, right? I have my own. I've, I've always gotten this compliment at work uh, where I just find unorthodox ways of fixing things or <laughs> finding out an answer. Uh, which requires, I, I think, my own unique way of uh, being creative. But I think once I get there, things will really start to click and pick up speed, and and uh, yeah, and, and it'll go from there. Yeah, you, you could you could see it in here. You know, you could even just from the last time, like you can tell it is, uh, like you said, starting to click. Of course, it's only the beginning phases of of anything, and I feel a lot of people always think that they have to be at the end. When you're just like the beginner and you send a video, like even, the, you know, it, it was a simple video. I forget the guy's name um, or anything about it, but like just being able to talk and put yourself out there and just try something. Yeah. You know, it really is that belief, just believing yourself that, yeah, I'm, I'm making the right decision because it feels good for me to do versus like, I want to make a decision because I want someone to think differently of me. In, in a way, you know, it's, uh, we could talk more about that later, but that's really, it really opened up. It was so simple, such a simple video, but it made so much, so it much made sense. so much sense. Right. And yeah, it, it sort of struck with me. Um, yeah, I just watched that recently too. I watched it maybe a few days ago. And I was thinking about how um, I landed my first position. It was through an Instagram post. I put myself out there. It was, you know, I, I was telling the world that I was, uh, pursuing this new career and that I was having a hard time and things were getting difficult and I wanted to sort of express myself and tell you know like hey I'm going through this but I'm gonna I'm gonna push through and yeah if it wasn't for that I wouldn't have gotten reached somebody reached out to me and offered me a job and wow <laughs> yeah I got in my first position I did not and know that. yeah uh it's crazy and and so I sort of taken that you know i after watching the video, you, I sort of think to myself now, which is why I started blogging. Yes. And I did it for two reasons. One, it's, it's sort of like when I had trouble t- with public speaking, I started doing those seminars uh, back when I was training. Yes. And I was like, oh, this will this will help me get through this. And I, so I thought to myself, 
and I was having some trouble at work too with them, um, with sort of writing to others and uh, sort of explaining myself or g- g- sort of sending information across the right way. Mm. So I was like, let me start writing. Let me start uh, writing to portray my ideas better. And uh, I think it's helped a ton. It, it's definitely helped me at work. It's helped me get my my thoughts out there in a concise, organized manner. Uh, I think it's important that people put themselves in uncomfortable positions. If that's like like the in the video, it, you know, go put yourself out there. Let other people see you. Right. Um, I think that's important. And even though I've been like sort of, I've always been sort of a private person. Right. I think this is different. Whereas you're trying to uh, s- sort of help others to get through something that might be difficult uh, because you know what it's like and you're sort of extending that to others and saying, hey, I, I know what it feels like I'm going through it too. Right, right. Well, That's imposter syndrome, sort of. Imposter. Yeah, everybody That's shares the one that. thing. I'm sorry? Everybody shares that, <laughs> uh, that, that sensation. Yeah. I feel even more so ever these days because yeah, it sure. is very not much privacy anymore many people right. aren't as private right so they do put themselves out there and not for no reason you no know, no mm-hmm. reason to be scared too and that's the one thing that that gentleman talked about was like you might not think and that's what me really reinforced helped me this in this podcast even to to think for the future it's like sometimes i always say like who the fuck do i think i am <laughs> right talk about anything that i do you know right but this is what clicked with me was he was like, most experts forget what it's like to be a beginner. And you, as a person that wants to speak from the new mind, understands what it's still like to be a beginner in this mm-hmm. whatever question you have. And you might have the best answer for it versus like a doctor who forgets what it's like to treat a common cold. You know, he's like, I don't know, orange juice, take some honey, shut up. Like that's what he would say, right? Mm-hmm. Or give you medicine. But like we are better we probably have more information or even more current information than someone that's an expert yeah Yeah, absolutely i actually also think it's i'm started saying seeing it now this way i think it's particularly thrilling to go through something brand new or to do something as a beginner because you're starting with a blank slate and you you can now maybe not make the same mistakes as you did in the past you now you're coming to the plate with sort of a little extra like almost like starting a game over right right like right. you're playing super mario world right and you die a couple of times you know what's kind of ahead you're like all right, right next time i'll jump at this time right right so you kind of go in with like some experience and i think that's a good thing um because you can kind of do it the right way now Right. And at the end, when you finally get there, which could take a while, you can look back and go, hey, man, look how much I did. I think it's incredibly empowering. <laughs> at least it is to me. And, and I've definitely felt that. And I sort of chase after that. I feel like if people did try that more, they would be incredibly satisfied with life. 100%. You said it before, too, like uh, putting yourself in uncomfortable positions in order to achieve something. And that's all it is, right? Because no one wants to do anything new or yeah. um, fresh or unknown, right? The fear of the unknown. Yeah. Um, like you said, it's, it really just takes you doing something, whether it's, whether it's something weird or different, it's still going to help you somewhere down the line. Like it, everything works in transition. It's actually, actually just the habit of doing something new and actually not being scared to fuck it up. Yeah. At the end of the day. You know, I I don't I also don't think it's a coincidence. Yeah, you know, this is my my opinion, my point of view. Yeah, that my best work has been done when I'm when there's when I'm very uncomfortable, when the, when I'm like when there's some discomfort, and I think you can say that for let's say with strength training, you have to put yourself under stressful loads to get stronger, right? right? And I've noticed the times I've sort of gotten through hard times was because there were hard times right it, and usually if they're not there like i said i wasn't being challenged and i got and I, you get you tend to get very comfortable and right. so now i sort of look at any difficult situations as, as an opportunity to sort of come out on top 
And Absolutely. it's happened every time I'm going to say it. <laughs> and so now I kind of welcome a little bit of it, you know, some, you know, if it's manageable, right? It has to be right, manageable. Right, you don't want right. something crazy. Right. But uh, yeah, a little bit of discomfort is good, I think. Yeah, think there so. has to be, there has to be something, something Orbit. adaptive, right? Exactly. You have to, like you said, there's a, the stress has to be applied, there has to be there, that will create some adaptation. I always right. think about it in gym sense, right? There's people mm-hmm. in the gym. We all know who they are. They're afraid to try doing a pull up. They're afraid to try doing a heavier squat. Even regardless of like that's just an example. You're afraid to do try to do a full push up because you're better at knee push ups or elevated push ups, and you get done more at that time. But you did not allow yourself to change, and your body has already adapted to those movements. But you being yeah. scared to increase to the 25, 35, 45 is going to keep you where you're at, if not regress you. Right. Because you could go backwards. You're going to go backwards. Right. We know them. We see them, right? You know who they are. And it might be you that we're talking to. Like it just might be you, and you need to kind of think of it differently. Perfect. Here's just a real quick example for myself mm-hmm. I want to be huge all the time, right? I'm very mad that I'm 45 and I'm getting aged. And I can feel my muscles going through mm-hmm. atrophy. I can see it. I can feel it. I pinch myself, but I do what I can. What I've noticed now that I've changed my diet a lot more than I already have. I've changed my workout schedule, my mindset. I feel 10,000 times better about my body image mm-hmm. now that some of that muscle is gone. The strength is gone, right? The, the strength that I've had, what, 15, 20 years ago, but it's still there. But I had to change differently. Like I really had to change my mindset to understanding that I'm at an age that that without the help of fucking juice, I Mm -hmm. might not get there again. But I can still do with what I got. You know, so keeping the right. And it just feels better now. You adapt. Right. You have to adapt. um, And I think there's also on top of that, what you're doing, too, is sort of being proactive and preventing any more the generation right right sort of by right. continuing to train that's it um i think i keep saying this but i i go back and like part of why i kick myself when when i tell you when i was you know when i was training those 15 years and you become a professional and you get comfortable you sort of slow down how hard you work because there's no need right there's no i guess right. no obvious need for it right but it became very obvious you know when everything shut down <laughs> Right. And I realized I didn't have any of the skills. So now I think I take this approach where I go, I have to protect myself or bulletproof myself in a sense for, for any other crazy change in the future, right. which is what motivates me. Like same, you know, to keep going to the gym, right? If something happens to me, let's say health wise, right. at least I'll have, I'll be des- designed in a way, I've designed myself in a way to be able to take a blow, whatever it may be. Um, and it's the same with the, uh, the technology now um, I have to study every day and pick up new skills and continue to learn. And that way, um, if uh, something comes my way that be, that could be challenging or changes the way I have to do things, at least I'll be a little prepared. It's gotta be, it's gotta be overwhelming because I can't imagine. I know like fitness has its basics and yours has its basics, but the, the evolution of tech is ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. And anytime, like, yeah. I don't understand how people keep up to it. Is it like, do you have to kind of just remember your niche at the mm-hmm. moment and just stick with that until something else flares that way? And then you pick that up or it's just like what you said, you're under pressure. Like, oh man, I got to learn this really fast. So let me go this way. Is that kind of how it goes? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say so. I think you, you pick, like you said, you pick your niche. Um, most of the things are sort of going to be somewhat relatable, right? If, if if you're, let's say, if you're working with code, um, and you only read JavaScript, if, if you if you look at other la- another language like Python, there are going to be some similarities. It isn't going to be like, you know, you're going from, I don't know, I'm thinking of like some uh, relatable idea, but um, it, you're going to recognize some patterns, and so that's right. good. And then you're going to keep doing that with other programming languages. And then outside of that, when it comes to other technologies, you know, they all these things kind of work the same, like Windows and the Mac operating system. They're mm-hmm. different, but 
you're still using the same platforms and you're still like making sort of seeing the same things over and over uh, again and okay. it's like after a while it starts to all sort of make sense in a way that helps you learn in a quick in a quick way um but also understand that you're not gonna <laughs> there's no way to learn all this stuff and there's no way you're gonna memorize any of it it's really just practicing how to pick up things quickly and uh and making sense of how all these things work mm -hmm. and it's just going to take time um yeah there's no there's no uh, other way around it right you just have to just participate don't don't uh don't relax don't fall behind uh continue to learn right that's just the way it is so if you're say all right this will kind of relate to the question then i want to go to your other one that i had for you you talked about um bouncing off this one and I just lost it. Fuck me in a dick. <laughs> We're old, dude. Always. I forget things all the time. Always. Always. I'll walk. I'll be like, why am I here? I literally walk backwards. It helps me. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, in, in those moments, right? The, the, we was called the weeds, right? You just like fluster. You really don't know which direction. And you find yourself doing that multiple times. There's got to be something. Uh, there how does that how do you handle that like how do you get through like mm. the mindset of like i'm never gonna fucking find out how this works or how can i figure that i am a piece of shit like where you know like mm. that how do you get through that part so there's two there's, there's two times or i say two different occasions where i feel this way if it's at the moment where i'm like and when i if i'm working on something and i can't figure something out it really helps to get up close your close your book and walk away Ooh. take five ten minutes i don't know what it is mm -hmm. <laughs> it like usually i'll, I'll find it, it's not surprising it wouldn't not now it's not surprising if i were to find the solution within 10 minutes there's something about just like taking a step away um if it's a i'd say a much more existential issue <laughs> where it's like i'm never gonna become this person i want to be and like right. everything's really hard and i don't know what i'm doing you have to tell yourself to shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's give it a moment. Let yourself wallow in your own whatever you're going in, going through, and then immediately push it away. And remember that. And I, I say this all the time, like a lot of these things require effort. And if it were easy, then everybody would would do it. Right. And there would be an immense amount of pride. And I promise you, if you if you get through that hard time and, and sort of tell yourself that you are able, you, you can do things, nothing is impossible, and you'll prove yourself right. I guarantee. Right. You just yeah. have to give it a second, whatever you're feeling, and then shove it aside and then keep your eye on the price. You'll be fine. Guaranteed. So it's normal. Right. We're human. We're gonna we're gonna doubt ourselves all the time. Right. Right. There's no way around that. It is a human. Human tendency. It looks like we're going to run out of time in two minutes. So real quick, guys, we're going to take a break and listen to our sponsors. It'll take about two minutes. You can fast forward. Don't fast forward. Just listen for a minute and give them uh, a time of your ear. And then we'll be right back with Ed with the mental. Fuck, man, I cannot say this podcast name yet. It's been too long. The Mental Mobility Podcast. We'll be right back. <laughs> so before we took a break, we were talking about how literally sometimes you have to shut yourself up from the chaos or the noise that you're probably thinking about or going through in your head over and over and over, like ruminating these thoughts and, and taking that step back. And I think that was really good. What you said was like, what surprised me was like, when you're getting stuck, take a step away, close the book and get out of there. It's so simple. Yeah. But yeah. And it really helps with you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I know. I remember when I was with my cohort, when I was learning about um, software development, they had this uh, thing called uh, a rubber duck. Have you heard about this? No, I think you told me about this. Yeah. But yeah, let's tell them. Tell them about this. It's funny. It's just like uh, you keep like a, a rubber duck on your desk and you basically when you have an issue and you can't solve a problem, you look at the rubber duck, and you explain what the problem is and what you're trying to do. And it's supposed to help you sort of get your idea across out loud and help you hear yourself 
and uh, possibly find a solution to the problem. Uh, but also what, what we all found in my cohort too is like this sort of phenomena of sort of walking away from something and just forgetting about it. You know, get away, stop banging your head against your, your, your keyboard. Right. And for some reason, 10 minutes, 20, 30 minutes, sometimes the next day, you know, you'll get up in the morning, you're eating breakfast and you'll have like a, a moment where you're like, oh, Right. And yeah, and next thing you're yeah. like, oh my God, I, I figured it out. The, yeah, I think sometimes your brain needs a break. It needs right. sort of a rest from this monotonous action of where you're not really making any progress. And Everything. The Yeah, the break, I think, is uh, helpful. Yeah. If you like, think about it in, in training purposes, right? Your Your brain is a muscle, right? It is an organ. It does use energy it does use calories right it does use Mm -hmm. glucose you want to get into that term it does so i think that's the reason why scientifically i think sorry not to interrupt you no yeah go. i think it's the reason why they believe humans uh they i mean scientists or whoever they are but are the size of our brain sort of why we reduce some of the size in our strength in our bodies and it's because our brain uh, requires so much energy that it our bodies had to sort of uh move things over somewhat so we've lost a little bit of muscle size strength and um you know the strength of the jaw and all these other things just to make sure it can all um dedicate it to the brain right it's a central nervous head like it's the center you are the center of the universe like that's what it is so if you're there was a perfect, perfect example. Like me and my brother talk about it all the time. My brother talks about this way a lot. Is the the habit he's instilled himself now is if he's in a project and for some reason there's just resistance. It's just like it's just something like you know when you're like you're doing something. It's like oh man, the coffee spilt, and then you're doing something. It's like oh man, I fucking so keeps calling. It's like whatever you're doing, stop, because you're draining your energy and you have no more energy in your brain for you to continue whatever it is you're doing. So take a second or a couple minutes, right? An hour a day, step away, mm-hmm. eat some food, drink some water, do something light. Let your fucking, your energy levels this much on Zelda, mm-hmm. go find some hearts, right? Ding, 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 get, get some energy back. And you usually end up completing so much more once you do take that break from whatever task it is that's daunting you the entire time. Yeah, yeah. I wonder sometimes if that's like how we're supposed. That's how we're designed. It's sort of we we allocate brain power in different places, and if you if you put it in, in one place, it could be you know, uh, maybe detrimental. If you just right. put it in one place for for too long, right? I think the brain likes to look at different things and look at them differently upside down from the left and right, whatever it may be. It doesn't have to be the same subject or topic. Uh, and it, it, in some way, maybe in the back end, <laughs> right. Uh, develop a joke. Uh, in no. some way in the, the part that you don't see happening, right. In the, the front facing of the app, the front end, I think for, for uh, maybe in the back end of the brain, there, there is, there are functions going on where if, if you're working on something and you don't, you don't understand it, if you you move somewhere else, there is some carryover from that other thing that that help that does sort of help whatever else you're working on. Right. Uh, there may be some crossover, like um, sort of some uh, monkey branching of ideas or whatever. But yeah, who knows? I I think there is. I think that's what makes us so uh, adaptable to things. We just we can we we can multitask and learn a lot of things. Uh, we have interest in a lot of things. Right. Uh. Yeah, and and maybe that's why it's good to step away and try something else. Yeah, just do something different. It'll yeah. your brain then in the back end. Right? I think when you were talking, I was thinking about like the person in the car that's just relies on his own instinct to get somewhere, but there's someone in the back that has the directions, but you don't. They don't want to listen to you because he knows <laughs> his way, right? Versus the other person who really knows everything. It's like, no, just make a left. And you're like, no, I got to go around the drug handle because this is the way I do it. And like, it's just that same mentality that I feel like we all have, which is not a bad thing. But at some point, it can be very bad, is the the hustle and have to finish things and get it done now. 
Right. It's, and sometimes it's pressured from above, too. Sometimes mm-hmm. you have no no choice than to be like, oh, shit, he wants it by tomorrow. Deadline, deadline, deadline. But imagine if you had a second to like not have a deadline mm-hmm. and just had like a time span, time span to where it's like, hey, just finish your project. It's like, yeah, all right. I could do it. I guess the pressure is to, to finish fast, to prove yourself to someone, to maybe prove yourself to your yeah. to your boss. Um, the added pressure makes it harder for you to to do this stuff. Yeah, I think there's some. Yeah, I think a little bit of both is good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you need some pressure. I think. Yes. Um, pressure. For sure. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, it can be also be not good. <laughs> Too much pressure, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Well, it depends. Everything's subjective, yeah. right? Every the world is subjective at the end of the day. But I mm-hmm. feel like when you're in that bind and that's what they tell us in therapy, right? One of the things we do is called, I always say is one mindfully or um, what type of distress tolerance is this? It's really just mind in one where like, if you're frustrated, just take a second and stop doing whatever it is you're doing and focus on something else completely different <clears throat> for a minute or two or three. And like, just describe the things you feel, see, like, I think that rubber duck is a great thing. That's like creeper over there. Creeper over there is the guy I talk to when I go, what the yeah. fuck am I going to talk about today? What's the video? Okay. Well, you know what I'll do creep. I'm going to go and chat GPT. I'm going to print out some topics that we could talk about, see which one works best. What do you think? You know, like that guy, people think he's just there for a reason. No, he's, he, I guess he's the rubber duck. Like he's there because like, he's always, he helps me focus my camera. He helps me sit down. He helps me find out what's the best angle. Like that's the guy. He's my back end guy or my, is that it? Back end? Is that what you call it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, background? yeah, I guess so. I don't know. It's a joke. Yeah. That's my joke. It was, terrible, <laughs> it was a terrible joke, but, um, but yeah, like that, that rubber duck uh, theory or why did you decide to, like, it surprised me that I got this invite or I saw a post up. Or mm-hmm. an invite. No, I got to post up because then I subscribe to on medium.com or medium app, I mm-hmm. believe it's called, where it's a pretty free writing there. And it was a great article. Like it was great writing. You're a great writer. Thank you. You know, and I believe that you express things that way as well as articulate in, in, in normal time too. But you are very private. You know, I never think of you to express your feelings that way. What made you want to start doing that? Uh, well, first, like I said, it was uh, I was noticing at work, I was having trouble getting my ideas across or sort of trying to explain to someone else what could be happening or what was going wrong. Uh, and since we all communicate mostly through uh, through chat, uh, I thought it'd be good if I sort of practice that on on my own free time. I also found it to be incredibly cathartic like almost like journaling yes and thirdly i also uh wanted to make i I sort of feel compelled to have to express what i'm going through to someone else that might be going through the same Mm. uh because i know how i feel when especially going going through the career change and going you know through whatever uh whatever i've talked about Right. Uh, on the blog I think there are people out there that can relate right and I want them to know that they're not alone it's a great reason to do it you know yeah. a lot of people do it for other reasons which of course in in the sub or underlying things yeah of course you'd love to reach new people more people mm-hmm. thousands of people but you always think about it like if it's one a day that's pretty fucking impactful you know even if it's one yeah. person a day it's one person that's that would make me so happy if someone you know and i've already gotten a lot of feedback and every time someone tells me like something i said that sort of resonated with them and it feels really good i'm i'm glad i'm happy that uh, they can sort of find relief and and they all say the same you know um me too i felt this way too and i think that's great i think um it's it in in a strange way, I feel like it. Hopefully, it can spark something in them to do something similar, right? To pursue something that they believe they cannot do, and to prove themselves worthy, or prove themselves wrong that right. they're not an imposter, they're not um, incapable of being a writer or a videographer or 
whatever it may be. You you can do what you want to do, but you have to apply yourself and do the work. Hmm. It's pretty much going to answer the, the question I was going to ask next. <laughs> was like I know um, you've hit your periods of depressive states, yeah. aka depression, uh, mm-hmm. depressive moments or, or time periods. Like what really helped you push through, or I don't want to say push you get through mm-hmm. get through that time. I mean, I, I've always been, I think this is, I'm, I, I, I'm afraid of saying this because I don't want people to misunderstand when yes. I say this. So I'll do my best, but I think it's important to accept reality, you know, accept your current situation or accept the, you know, the, <laughs> what's in front of you. Right. Uh, it's as real as the table, right? So I think when, when, if and when you are depressed, you, you I think it's important to deal with whatever is um, making you feel that way. You have to give it time and um, you can't run away from it. So I, I think that's very important. So whenever I go through a moment uh where I'm feeling sort of overwhelmed or by something or something sort of uh, on on my back or on my neck, I face it. I'd say to myself, like, here it is. This is what this is the situation. Now, what are you going to do about it? Right. Uh, and I I think that's the way I handle it and deal with things uh, because I know that that this is just how it, the process works. It's not something that I'm going to cure overnight. You just have to. Um, let it let it sort of roll over you like a like a storm. It'll pass, right? The sun is going to come. It's definitely going to come out. So you just point. have to, yeah. At some point, it'll be out there. Right. Very very true. And being being real with yourself is probably the best advice you could give to someone. A lot of us live in a la la land. A lot yeah. of us think we're going to be an NBA yeah. star. You know. Mm. Yeah. Less than 0.01% will, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. doesn't mean you stop trying, you know, just because you're right, not there right. doesn't mean you're not making an impact in your own life, you know, but it's Absolutely. hard. It's hard. It's yeah. Hard. I think it takes a level. Yeah. It definitely takes maturity and an understanding of things. Um, But at the end of the day, and again, for me, I think, dealing with the reality and the, of the current state in the situation physically and temporally right um i think it's important to sort of look at it in the face and say, okay right it's okay that's how it is right and to go away it's gonna go, go away. away it's gonna go away yeah but you have to work you have to work have to there work. there is you cannot sit back and wallow in some uh yeah and you can't you can't give it too much power right you you have to push Good back one. you Good have to one. push back you can't it it yeah. has a lot of power it has a lot fucking of power, yeah. bowser's cloud is big right yeah. but like yeah. you could you get through that thing man like it's it's very tough to believe you can mm-hmm. especially when you're in the cloud but like just give it time and you have to work you have to climb, you have to fight, you have to do whatever all those yeah. terms say to get through it and realize like, this is exactly what's happening to me. But yeah. why? Now you do the work. I and mean, the work doesn't mean like, oh, I'm going to work out. No, no, the work is why is this, why do you feel this way? And why are you afraid to talk about it? And why are you afraid to bring it up to the surface? Because the more you suppress it, the more you depress it. Right. And that's right. the real thing. Stop. This maturity. is maturity. Yeah, yeah. It takes me some, a lot of maturity. Um, this it, this is like sort of strange, but I, I can I remember a few months ago I was really I was playing this game. Uh, and maybe some people have heard of it called Elder Scrolls. It's from it's a game made by From Software, but they're famously known for making their games incredibly difficult, hmm. complex, um, and unfair. Right, like if you if you die in the game, you get punished hard. Wow. You have to, you they, you get sent back really far. You have to start all over. Maybe you lose some things that are really valuable yeah. and there's no, and, and 
when you deal and then if there's a boss or some uh, character in the game that that is difficult and and seems unfair um it's like the game doesn't care it's like this is how it is and i think it, it to me i i found some sort of uh refuge there because it, it reminded me it's just <laughs> i know i'm reaching here but it did remind me a lot about life you know it's like mm. there are things that happen that you have no control over but you come back every time you you start over you get up and this time you plan accordingly right you you know what's coming you know what's at the, at the end on the other side that sent you back you go okay what do i have to do to get through this <laughs> and i think it's it's the same way you have to you have to prepare you have to pick yourself up you 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 can't like sit back and turn off the game you you have to participate in this thing and it's extremely rewarding once you get through it but all that does is just create you have to go to the other boss and the other side it's like a, right. another one right, <laughs> right. You have to do that thing again <laughs> so i think that's the way we have to handle all this right you know are you going to make it to the other side yeah are I, you? I think i i am for sure right. Right. And you have to have the belief system. Yeah. You have to have that. If I get sent back, yeah. then I'm like, all right, what did I do wrong? Prepare a different way. Right back yeah. at it. Yeah. Fuck. God, that sounds like a hard game and terrible at the same yeah, time. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's definitely. If you <laughs> no. look it up on, on YouTube, you see a lot of people raging. I will because you're like, yeah. and you lose stuff too. I'm like, come on. It's yeah, not yeah. that bad. I'm all the way back in the Ooh. beginning. And then I lost all my weapons. That I... could be painful. Yeah. Yeah. All <laughs> yeah. the all the stuff you work for, it's gone. I'm done. <laughs> Where's Kung Fu for Nintendo? That's, yeah, that's easier. <laughs> yeah. That's simpler. But it's, it's but it's there's another side to it. It's in, incredibly satisfying when you get through the hard part. You're like, right. like I fucking did it. You know? Yeah, it feels really good. Yeah. But see, it's cool too. Like having even having those things to kind of create that outlet for yourself. Like people think it just has to be all this hard stuff. Everyone's different, right? Everyone has these outlets, and sometimes doing that game. If you're a gamer, like that might help you find an outlook in life. Like, oh shit. Just like you said, it just clicks for some people, and you'll be eating breakfast on Monday morning out of nowhere. The answer just pops up, and that's just you doing the work, figuring it out, and just hanging on you know, really just hanging on. And um, life is not fun, you know, it's not something that's going to be given to you. Some people it is, but you're not that person if you're listening to this, right? You are struggling some way, and mm -hmm. hopefully, anything we say you can take with a grain of salt and add it to your plate. That's really it. It's kind yeah. of why we're here, you know. Absolutely. So, no, not supposed to be easy. No, if it was, yeah. we'd be amoebas. We would be amoebas. <laughs> um, what do you think? Let's see. What do you think would be a big takeaway? Even if, if you repeat yourself, what do you think would be the biggest takeaway um, from this podcast for a person that's listening right now? Hmm. Ooh, Jeopardy moment. I think the biggest takeaway, I would say, I think it's okay. It's okay to doubt yourself. It's okay to sort of, I think there's another thing that happens with imposter syndrome. You just beat yourself down, right? With like, you just like mash yourself into the ground. Like, I, I'm not good. I suck. I'm never going to be good. All that stuff. <laughs> like, you're, you're not necessarily wrong to feel that way. I think the the thing is to acknowledge it. And the takeaway I'd say here is like, you, you, you will surprise yourself. I've done, I've surprised myself so many times and I'm incredibly proud of what I've done. And I, I didn't get there without the self doubt. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and it's okay. Let it in, but um, push it aside. Like I said, you have to, Put yourself in a position and say, do the opposite, right? If you're going to let yourself get buried by this feeling of being an imposter, do the other side where you go, but what if I'm the hero? Mm -mm. What does that look like? Mm. Feels good. Yeah, because we don't ever see that. Right. Why would but you we do. Believe? Yeah, I, I mean, do. you do. Yeah. Why would we you do. think that? You know, I'm yeah. sure we're so trained to think opposite. Yeah. You bad. can feel like an imposter. Right. But also start to make yourself the hero. Yeah, the hero. Yeah. That's you are joke. the master of what what you control in, in your in in your very close proximity. I can do things. I can go online. I can study. I can pick up a new skill. I can um maybe I can build it this way. If I don't know how, look up how. Right. It, 
it's <laughs> all at the tip of your fingers and you 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 have to do something about it right it's once again it's the work yeah, right it's work. yeah if you want to learn something new you can easily learn how to do yeah, anything in, anything you want in the world anything you yeah, want it's there good or bad right you want to be a right. fucking super villain i'm sure there's an ebook <laughs> yes. how to be a super oh, villain. yeah yeah you yeah. know yeah i actually want to look for it now just in case just in case <laughs> i think in my last blog post you know so i i had accomplished so much in the past couple uh, past couple of weeks and a lot of it was driven by like uh, negative energy i'd say that's why i think i wrote at the end you know if you can operate with in- indignance you know being indignant um i i think it's good but the danger is like you could become the villain you could be, be the bad guy yeah uh you have to harness it in the, in the right way oh yeah Oh yeah, man. Where can uh where can people find you? Like uh what stuff? I know you're on Instagram, you are on mm-hmm. uh that blog post. Yeah, maybe you can you. post the uh Instagram handle. I don't know how it works on YouTube. Um and then also the blog is there as well on Medium. Uh Stay Frosty mm-hmm. is the name of it. Uh yeah, please uh do all that stuff. Like and subscribe like this on YouTube. Yeah. But um yeah, and I'm I'm also working on starting a YouTube channel that's still in progress. Yes. Uh yeah, trying to get uh my camera skills up and also find the time to do yes. things like tech reviews. Um right now I'm working on this project where um I'm working with an Arduino Uno. It's like a little uh CPU and just learning about uh, electrical connections and uh writing code in C. So yeah, that's what I'm doing now. And then once I'm done with that, I'll do a review, hopefully put it on YouTube, and that'll be the start of the channel. That's cool. And then also planning on meeting with several people, other entrepreneurs, and seeing what they're doing. And on, along the similar vein of um, getting through hard things and telling, showing other people like how they um, how they made what they made or how they're doing what they're doing. Oh, I like it. Yeah. I like it. It's almost the engineering aspect of everything. Absolutely. Like engineering of your life. Right? Yeah, engineering your life. How did you, How did you get that thing done? That's cool. Is that what it's called? I hope so. <laughs> no. Oh no, it's called Stay Frosty. We'll see. Watch it. Oh, I'm like, yeah, like, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. 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 Basically, the saying of the Stay Frosty is like, you know, I think uh, soldiers use it, in the meaning yeah. like to stay, stay sharp, stay aware. Oh, Don't sleep. I never heard of that. No, I literally yeah. thought of like I completely went a different direction. I was thinking about snow cones. Mm-hmm. So, what what does Stay? I frosty mean, the logo mean? be dope frosty. if I do like an ice cream cone. <laughs> What's Stay Frosty mean? Like uh, military? You said. Yeah, I think the military is in the military use where they, um, uh, where it's like look, look alive, stay, stay sharp, um, mm-hmm. you know, listen, keep your eyes open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for me, stay. I take it away as like you know, keep your skills up. Got it. Stay sharp. They'll say like antennas up. I hear that a lot. Antennas up. Mm-hmm. Keep your antennas up. Sure. You know, so you're kind of, you know, I stay frost. I never knew what that meant. Mm-hmm. Wow, I thought it was a cool word. Like you just had that. I was like, oh, stay frost. That's, That's from cool. my my favorite movie, Aliens. Uh, uh, the uh, old movie. Never I seen think 1986. <laughs> uh, I mean, well, of course not. Well, I, yeah. I'm not scared of alien movies. I just at that time, I definitely was very scared of them. But yeah. now, I'm still I'm scared one of the of best them. horror movies of all time. I think. And see, you said horror movie. I'm, I'm not watching it no more. Horror, movie. space horror. As some people call it. Yeah, is that what they call it? Space horror. I think, sci-fi? So. I think that's the classification of the genre. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you want to get knickknacky, yeah. but uh, yeah, there's a scene where they're coming and and they all the marines are the space marines are waiting. And uh, I think it's uh, one of the Corporal Hicks or something. He's like, stay frosty, you know, telling him, hey, mm-hmm. like, stay sharp. Stay they're awake. Coming. Yeah, they're coming. Yeah. BK, don't fucking close your eyes yeah. pretty much. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. But I never thought that ever in my life. Thank you so much for coming out to the podcast. Thank you for being Thank on you. the podcast, Ed. Uh, I'm sure we're going to see you soon, as yeah. always, because Absolutely. especially season four, for sure. Um, we love to hear an update about your YouTube and, and everything going out. And again, if you guys have not uh, heard or listened, make sure you go to Medium. I don't know if it's .com or if it's just the app Medium. Is it Medium.com? It's Medium.com. Yeah, there is an app. 
You it is an app. That's what I have. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. I subscribe because it's easier than trying to search for him. It's easier to find mm -hmm. him, subscribe to him because then they get sent to my email. And now I know he posted something. And it's like a present. You know, when you get an email like this fucking guy, sometimes you get it from me. It's like fucking Pete. Pete the <laughs> yeah, fat boss expert. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a newsletter that's fake. Yeah, right. Yeah. I didn't even write it. It was I bought it from someone many years ago. And um, it's not that. Right. It just really it's like it just gives you an awareness that there's something new up and it's always mm -hmm. worth to read. So I don't read at all but i read his stuff and it just makes sense you know it kind of connects with me and that's why i i really enjoy it so I'm, that's why i'm really excited for your you know for your youtube channel when that comes through yeah and just definitely let us know man so. yeah i mean the hope and the dream is like that people would respond and then maybe i can write uh articles of maybe somebody has a question or an idea and i and i can sort of build on that uh it'd be that's cool to write a responsive blog in a in a, in a sense it's the best. We'll see. We'll see how it's it goes. The best. If you guys have questions, put the question in the comments mm -hmm. and then he could write something. You know, it really helps. Like people think they don't, they're very shy. If you want, DM us. Like it, do it in private. Mm -hmm. People DM me all the time versus put the comments because sometimes they don't want their stuff to be out there. If you want, DM us, find us, uh, put his handle underneath. Thing. It's dev underscore ed underscore Vera. I believe that is it. I can be wrong. But if not, it'll stay right underneath him. And you can always reach out to me. Just DM me if you have a question, anything you want us to talk about or cover. And uh, that's it, guys. So thank you so much for coming out. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Uh, episode number 110 of the Mental Mobility Podcast. Almost got it. <laughs> I almost got it. I was like, jeez, the bees, <laughs> But it's cool. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Peace out. See you next time.